Hey everybody, happy Saturday to all of you. I hope all is well and wonderful in your world this fine Saturday. How's it going everybody? Good, 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 good. Alrighty, alrighty, hi. Let's get a little less headroom here. What's happening party people? I'm so glad to see all of you. I hope you had a wonderful June as we come towards the end of, let's see, Pride Month, uh, Black Music Month, Men's Health Month. And actually that's why, hi Cheryl, that's what uh, we're gonna be talking uh, about today in celebrating uh, Men's Health and Men's Health Month. Uh, where are you guys? Let me know where you are. I see Toronto, one of my favorite spots, but I love Canada overall. Uh, let's see, where else are you in the world? Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. A lot of you may be new to my platform, new to my space um, because of uh, the Upshaws. Hey, how about we got the season two pickup? Hey, you guys did it. You did it. You watched and watched. You binged. You loved it. And so for that, I say thank you on behalf of the Upshaws cast and crew. And we are looking forward to an amazing season two. Y'all ain't ready though. <laughs> we probably ain't ready for all the thunder that that writer's room is gonna bring us. All right, we got Queens, Jersey. Hello from the Netherlands. Mwah! Hello, hello, hello. Oh, somebody said I'm in hell. Oh no, baby. Well, come on up out of there. Just visit, don't live there. Uh, let's see, where else? Boston. All right, all right, all right. Yes, everybody, thank you for the big congratulations. We're very excited. So, hey, Houston. All right, Minneapolis. All right, Dublin, Ireland. Okay, okay. Uh, my dear friend Yvette Nicole Brown is in Dublin filming right now. Oh, Chi Town, I see you, I see you. Orem, Utah. Hello, hello, hello. Maryland in the house. All right, all right, all right. So guys, thank you. Big ups to my team over at Refresh by KF. That is my lifestyle brand. So again, some of you may be new to the platform here, to my channel and uh, my, my page and, and what else we do here. Um, San Diego's in the house. Do you see this? Wah, wah, wah. Yes, San Diego. Love all the conservation efforts that... Uh, that uh, San Diego uh, Wild Animal Park is doing and uh, just tons of wonderful conservation and making sure that uh, extinction doesn't happen to a lot of our precious species. So anywho, um, this platform of mine, I utilize for, uh, of course, to connect with you guys, but to connect, hey, uh-uh, take out that auntie. This is the no auntie zone, Adriana Williams, 1470. This is the big sis zone only, okay? So go on and get rid of that. Swipe it on out of here and say, hey, big sis. And I'll say, hey, girl. So <laughs> this is for real, the no, the no auntie zone. Uh-uh, we're not doing that, baby. Um, so we want to, oh, all right, another person from Ireland up in the, up in the house. Hey, guys. So um, with Refresh by KF, that is my wellness uh, lifestyle platform. And so I, I told my team that I wanted to uh, really deep dive into a space um, that really not only celebrates uh, that wealth is, 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 but health is wealth. And that your, your lifestyle, um, you know, sometimes we tend to think of self-care as a luxury. It's a necessity. And it isn't just for females, okay? So just humanity. And so I wanted to basically be able to have a platform where we did some deep dives, we did some conversations, we did some um, inspiration, uh, where we can definitely talk about things, sometimes things that are uncomfortable, because of course, the human body, the human mind and spirit, uh, sometimes it's not all it's cracked up to be. And that's something that we usually are <laughs> responsible for. Uh, we hold on to things and we create toxic energy. Uh, hello, Bahamas, hi, NASA. New York in the house. Hey now. Uh, and so we hold on to things that create a toxic environment. We um, don't take care of our bodies. This is our sanctuary uh, from here all the way down to the bottoms of our feet. And so um, these conversations uh, uh, that are sponsored by Refresh by KF, uh, we do our very best to bring you some really, um, honestly, in my opinion, exquisite content 
um, that's invigorating, that is of course refreshing, because we believe whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. And so uh, we want to make sure that we are doing all that we can to refresh you, uh, your mind, your body, your spirit, uh, through um, conversations, uh, through information, through travel, through music, uh, mindfulness, uh, again, being able to really care for our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. So, as you see in the pinned comment there, so be sure to follow us at Refresh by KF. So, if you don't already follow us, jump on out, follow Refresh by KF, and jump back in, and we'll be right here waiting for you to start our conversations. So, this is, um, as I mentioned, Men's Health Month. And so uh, we are um, really spotlighting the awareness for um, men's health. Um, we want to, hey Philly, uh, we want to be able to um, really talk about uh, some of the things that sometimes people just aren't talking about. You know, that's a lot of what you'll find with, with my brand. Um, I'm not a bandwagon celebrity person. Um, I don't just jump on and post some stuff because everybody else is or that's trending. Uh, and so that being said, uh, hello UK. Uh, and so uh, that being said, we want to bring some folks into the room um, who will be able to um, share some info with you, inspire you guys. And ladies, just because this is Men's Health Month, that doesn't mean we get to check out, okay? And just, uh, you know, act like, oh, we're just gonna go ahead and, and that's not for us. Um, it is very much so for us. Just like I told the fellas last month when it was Women's Health Awareness Month, that we have to really care for one another. And that means having an awareness about each other, what makes us tick, what's happening with our bodies and our minds and our spirits. So this is for everybody, okay? And so we want to be able to um, talk about some things. On the refresh page, you'll see some really inspiring videos uh, uh, and, and information, reminders uh, for things about, you know, your checkups, uh, fellas and ladies for last month, getting our checkups. Uh, making sure that we understand that awareness and prevention is a huge part of keeping our mind, our bodies, our spirits in tune and healthy, 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 healthy. We have been through a lot, as we all know, last year. We continue to uh, create and discover new norms for ourselves. But sometimes I feel like we are also... Um, as human beings, we are finding places to explore and discover new elements of ourselves. Hey, Detroit. And so uh, we want to, somebody said, I got my checkup. Way to go, way to go. And so we want to, well, happy birthday to you. And so someone said, prevention is the mes best medicine. Absolutely. Uh, Eddie Uptown, happy birthday. So we want to make sure that we understand, oh, Hi, sis. I miss you, sis. Hello, hello, hello. Um, and so we want to make sure that we are really caring for our sanctuary. Uh, a few weeks ago, I did a post and I said, handle with care. And I was speaking about how precious gems are strong. Precious gems are strong, strong, strong. They're stones. And yet they are usually handled with the utmost care. And so why is that? Because precious gems and stones are um, regarded as being very valuable and the highest quality. And so they are handled with care. And I feel like strong people, that sometimes we don't give ourselves that same kind of care and that, sen that sense of um, how we deal with ourselves, let alone how we allow other people to deal with us and how we deal with other people. Um, yes, people can be strong, but at the same time, um, they have to be handled with care. It doesn't mean at all that they're weak. And so that being said, we want to make sure that our men certainly understand that, that yes, we know that there's such an expectation uh, for you to be strong, strong, strong all the time, all the time, all the time. And after a while, um, you have to either release, uh, you have to keep working to build up that strength, uh, and you have to feel um, that you have safe spaces when you maybe aren't feeling quite as strong. Uh, and so that's some of what we're gonna be uh, diving into today. 
Uh, we are going to be speaking with the gentleman first up, uh, Mr. Tim Harris. We're going to speak, be speaking with him uh, pretty much about um, the spiritual aspects uh, for me. And uh, he's uh, done some wonderful work in this space. Uh, and so we are very excited to, hello. Hi. How are you? I am good. I'm very excited to be here. I'm representing Indianapolis, Indiana. <laughs> Hey, home home of the upshows. I know. <laughs> we we could be neighbors. <laughs> you might not want to be the upshaws neighbor. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> so welcome into the building, everybody. Mr. Tim Harris, we are so thrilled to have you here, sir. Thank you for joining us on this Saturday, taking some time out of your busy schedule. Uh, and let me just turn up my own volume here. Um, and so let's just dive right in. Uh, and guys, listen, this is a space, okay, my platforms, these spaces, these conversations, it does not matter uh, your race, your creed, your religion, your gender, your, your how you present. Uh, I shouldn't say it doesn't matter. What I mean by that is it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter from the standpoint of what we want to share with you is for everybody for everybody. Throw up some words on here that says everybody. E-R apostrophe. <laughs> y. B-O-D-Y. Everybody. This is for everybody. And the same with Refresh. Everything I do is always for everybody. So hello, sir. <laughs> hey. Hi. So let's just dive right in in terms okay. of men and men's health and spirituality. You know, we talk so much about um, men having their checkups. Thank you, Refresh. Uh, we want to make sure that I see you guys. Yes, I love it. So we want to make sure that we really are um, leaning into the importance of not only our physical health. Yes, checkups are important. Uh, for men, when we get to a certain age, you know, making sure we do it, the prostate checkups, make sure, you know, all of those things. But in the last few years, mental health mm -hmm. has really, and mental health awareness has definitely gotten pushed onto the stage quite a bit more. And, you know, yay for that. But that said, I feel like there's a piece that, that goes hand in hand with mental health, and that is spiritual health. Would that mm -hmm. be a, a fair assessment? No, definitely, a hundred percent. And one thing, so, you know, I've been in the Bible, you know, Christian for all my life, it seems like. And, and one thing that can be missed, um, but it's clear in the Bible that uh, it says to take heed to yourself. It means pay attention to what's going on with you. You know, how do you feel? What, what's going on with your heart? What's going on with your mind? You know, um, are you angry? Are you bitter? What's going on with you? And he said, pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. and, and so a lot of people miss that. But it's mm -hmm. very important uh, when it comes to your spiritual and mental health. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that you have um, done, you've, you've had this tremendous undertaking uh, mm -hmm. where you've written a Bible. Yes. Do you have that right? Yeah. Um, it's called the Harris Study Bible. Um, I started when I was 15 years old. I'm 40 now. So okay. I feel old, but I'm not. <laughs> But um, yeah, I've been working on that and, and just uh, through that experience have been able to cultivate and to get, be able to develop um, things that would help men and women um, better live their life with, again, mental health, spiritual health, they're all connected. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Now, um, guys, for the purposes of this conversation, okay, because again, we're in also a climate where um, everybody has a heightened awareness of what they're sensitive to. Uh, and so just because uh, in Mr. Harris's case, he is referencing uh, the Bible and scripture and uh, Christianity, you know, again, what your belief system is, that's for you. And that works for you, if that works for you. Um, sometimes we, you know, interchange things and, and say, um, the universe the creator, um, we specify other religions, everyone is welcomed here. But yeah. again, the, the, the overriding theme to all of that, the blanket is um, 
the space that created you is saying, take care of you. Is that, yeah. would that be a right thing to say? Yeah, and I, you know, the goal is not to offend anyone. You know, I already, mm -hmm. I made my choice on, mm -hmm. on who I serve and how I serve. So everyone has to make their own choice. Um, and I'm, I'm clear about what I have chosen. So I, I think that is that. But when it comes yes. to um, spirituality and mental health, the, the mm -hmm. point is um, that God has already determined that we should, um, again, according to the Bible, be whole in body, spirit, and soul. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. said that because it was very important that mm -hmm. we consider our mental, our physical, our emotional health. Yes. What are some tips or some ways in particular that men, <laughs> refresh, we're still here, uh, some tips that men specifically can do, in your opinion, um, to be able to really cultivate and, and even curate their spiritual health? Mm -hmm. So one thing that um, I consider, and I, I have two girls, and one thing I told them, there, there's two types of men I do not want them to marry. And one of them uh, that is relative to today is an angry man. Mm. Um, somebody that is always angry or given to anger uh, because they have not yet developed the emotional IQ on how to process things that upset them. Ooh, and so, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. So uh, there, there's several things that go along with that. And, and one thing as far as a father you know, the Bible says, do not provoke your children. Mm -hmm. Don't make them angry. You know, don't put them in positions that you are making them mad. You know, you're trying to drive them and motivate them, but don't yes. use anger to mm -hmm. do that. That's right. The other, the other key thing about that is that once you realize you're angry, actually address that. You know, when I just said, take heed to yourself, pay attention to yourself, um, deal with that in a positive way. Don't deal with that, you know, with your fist, with your yelling and your words, but actually be able to communicate and be able to release that anger in a positive way. You know, the Bible says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't that let means, it. Don't, don't, be, don't let it be a long time between when the event happens and the time that you deal with it. And a lot of times, you know, people can be ticking time bombs. Yes. I, I think that too many times yes. we've had too many mm -hmm. cases when we've had, you know, mass murder in mm -hmm. this country, too much blood on this street by mm -hmm. ticking time bombs, people who mm -hmm. have not dealt with their anger. anger. And so um, you have to release that anger. And a lot of times that deals with how you deal with unforgiveness and how you deal with things that have happened to you. And so, you know, the Bible addresses that very clearly on uh, methods of dealing with unforgiveness. But the bottom line, if you're angry, you know, one, one lie um, that I've heard is that time heals all wounds. And it really doesn't. Time, no, sir. Time, time just gives you time to plan out how you're going to get them back. You don't want me to talk about, uh, and, and, you know, my son yet, but time, time can give you, <laughs> even me, like, you know, I, time to let that joker seep and I, was, I was prone to uh, get people back, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm sorry, proceed. No, no, it's, it's true, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, time does not heal all wounds you really have to address it. Sometimes people aren't strong enough to deal with things as soon as they happen. Yeah. And, and, you know, for me, again, I'm coming from a Bible perspective, but the Bible says, you know, when your heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. And mm -hmm. what that means is sometimes I'm not strong enough to mm -hmm. deal with things by myself, mm -hmm. that I actually need someone to help me and yeah. to guide me through this. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, take me to another solution that is better than me. And, and so mm -hmm. in, in doing that, you have to realize that you can't handle what happened to you. Mm -hmm. You know, I try to be a good husband and all that time, but um, I, one time, you know, I upset my wife and I, I apologize. But at the same token, I said, I can't help you with the healing of the process. 
you know, mm-hmm. I can apologize, but I can't make it right. You know, I can't do what your heart needs. I right. can just, you know, change and stop. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I've never like cheated on my wife, but you know, mm-hmm. for people that do and have that experience, that man or that woman can't make it right. You know, they can't fix your heart. They can't heal you, Mm -hmm. but they can just stop and change. But you have to allow yourself to go through that healing process. Yeah. And and a lot of people, they think they're healed, but then they, you know, are checking their spouse's phone behind their back. They're Mm -hmm. doing this or that. And they're they're not really healed uh, Mm -hmm. from those experiences. And so understanding, I guess, where you are actually paying attention to yourself and allowing, like I said, someone to help you yeah. um, along the way, being able to acknowledge it, release it, all those factors play into mental and spiritual health. Yeah, 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 yeah. Healing is very important. Uh, we had a, uh, a woman on um, uh, a, a few months ago, and she said something so profound that is just, it really just stuck with me. She said, don't rush your bounce back. Mm-hmm, Yeah. And, you know, you can um, definitely, people talk about, you know, if I forgive, but I don't forget. And that's where grace comes into play. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to uh, my head team member, Kira, about uh, grace actually just today. Mm -hmm. And she dropped something in my spirit. And I was like, oh, yes, because grace can change your atmosphere. Mm -hmm just adding grace to whatever it is can really just 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 shift your atmosphere when you put grace in the space is what mm-hmm. she and I kind of arrived at and it was so it was so profound quite honestly because I was you know in my feelings about something and we mm-hmm. were sharing and I was and I was talking about it and and she says okay yeah I, I got you and, and yes but um we understand that grace can really ease some of that. Grace yeah. can help to not not dispel and and, dissip- and and make it just disappear, but it can definitely help that hardened heart, that mm-hmm. hardened mindset. And and sometimes we don't, you know, sometimes we start equating grace with weakness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's not that's not the case, is it? No, no. And so I think along with that, one thing that uh, I realized, you know, a lot of people uh, in other disciplines, they talk about self-confidence. And for my discipline, um, I really talk about God confidence. Mm-hmm. And, and the difference is knowing that he that has begun a good work in you, he shall perform yeah. it. Not, knowing, might. not might, not might, not might, not, not he no. shall, yeah. he shall be. Mm-hmm. And one one good example uh, for me is Gideon because Gideon lacked a lot of self confidence, mm. and so when God was looking at him as a mighty man of valor, He was looking at himself as weak and incapable, and so Gideon was like, "Lord, how am I going to accomplish this great thing that You gave me that You put in my heart?" Mm-hmm. And and God's response was that I will be with you, that you know when nobody else loves you, uh, God loves you. And sometimes we look back, you know, people who don't know God yet and they're struggling, um, they, they may say, you know, God is not there. But then when they find God, they look and realize that God was there all the time, mm-hmm. you know. And so that becomes the difference um, that just God, like favor is, is God being with you. It's, mm-hmm. it's God liking you. It's that favor with God. And mm-hmm. just God being there is really enough to help you when you mm-hmm. think you're alone or when you think you're abandoned or when your heart is broken. You mm-hmm. know, the, the first thing that Jesus said that he came to do was to heal the brokenhearted, mm-hmm. right? And so God's objective is to help our hearts. Mm-hmm. So we talk about mental, emotional health. Yeah. Um, and that's really the position of what mm-hmm. he came to do. And so right. if you allow mm-hmm. God to do that, that's what he's here for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is it that that propelled you, especially at age 15, to write a Bible, you know, uh, yeah. that, that's quite an undertaking at any age, let alone uh, a 15 year old uh, young man. Uh, yeah. and, and how has that process been um, for you? I can I would assume uh, that it's, it's, it's pretty life changing. 
uh, that that process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So 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 two questions with that. What kind of catapulted you into that, or did you kind of ease into it? Um, but also um, over that journey, that's you know over a decade or, or, or too long. What? How did that affect your 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 manhood? If I if I can be so bold as to put it that way. Um, so yeah, there's a couple things with that. Um, but number one, even back then when I was young, you know, I love God and I love God's people. You know, mm -hmm. I love people. It's, um, the, the Bible is not meant to hate people. It's really mm -hmm. about love. And, and so one, one big problem that um, makes people uh, reject the Bible is that they don't understand it. You know, and so they just take little tidbits, but they don't really take the time to understand it. And so my goal, even back then as an age 15, was to provide, uh, with the help of the Lord, some easy ways to better understand the Bible and the intentions of the Bible. Um, and, and so, um, you know, my goal in, in that was really just the act of love. And mm -hmm. so back then, you know, thank the Lord, I'm, I'm more successful and my family is more successful now than we were then, but I, I couldn't afford a computer back then or mm. software back then. So I just started with uh, pencil and paper. Oh, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> that b man has just been chiseling on rocks like they wrote it. <laughs> what the what? <laughs> no, but, but uh, you know, my dad had preached a message. He's, he's a pastor. He had preached a message. Uh -huh. Uh, said, what's in your hand? And what that means is you may not have all the resources starting now. And so I was like, what's in my hand? I was like, pencil and paper. So I was wow. like, we're going to get started with uh, pencil and paper. So mm -hmm. if you ever, uh, if the Upshars ever come and visit my house, uh, you guys will see like just notebooks full of uh, <laughs> wow. pencil and paper. Um, but that, that's one thing. And then just, you know, being able to provide that understanding to people so that they're just not quick to just reject the Bible or just to not try. Mm -hmm. um, that's very important to me. Got you. And yeah. then how is that, how did that journey affect you spiritually, your, your spiritual growth um, as, as a man? Um, and so, and, yeah, and your mean, maturation into manhood. Yeah. So uh, one thing that I've done, you know, I'm not exempt from making mistakes, but I'm, I'm man enough to admit it. Mm -hmm. um, and that goes with, like I said, with my wife or my kids or whoever. Um, I'm not scared to say, okay, I messed this up. Mm -hmm. You know, you really can't find truth um, until you can actually admit <laughs> what you've done wrong. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, part of that, just being a man is, is being able to say, okay, this is what the Bible says. This is what I did. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. just move on. Because um, mm -hmm. Jesus came to make us free. So mm -hmm. bottom line, it's like, okay. Um, I've been able to actually develop, um, you know, it takes a bigger heart to be tender. Um, it takes more strength to be tender hearted and mm -hmm. to actually reach out to people than it does to build walls mm -hmm. and, and to, like you said, be hard. Um, it takes more strength to allow someone to actually hurt your feelings versus, um, I don't care what people say, you know, it takes more strength to actually care about people yeah. and care mm -hmm. about what they think and feel. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really has shaped me um, mm -hmm. and, and made me who I am today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, guys, we're speaking with uh, Mr. Tim Harris. He's an amazing speaker and author, uh, spiritual uh, life coach, if I may uh, be so bold. And if you're not one, you are one now. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, Mr. Harris has uh, written a Bible, the Harris Bible. Uh, Refresh has already put it, put it in the comments at Harris Bible. Uh, and again, it's, it's just uh, a work that he did as an undertaking mm -hmm. to help um, just make it a bit more accessible yeah. and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and we're talking about spiritual health, uh, mm -hmm. specifically for men and how important spiritual health is when you're dealing with your total overall health and the connectivity between spiritual health and mental health, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my last questions for you, sir, um, when we're dealing with some, what I think are myths and misnomers uh, that, you know, oh, men don't talk, men don't share, men don't communicate, and, and that sort of thing, 
Uh, I think number one, that's just not true. If they, if, if men feel that they are in a safe space where they won't feel judged and they won't feel um, abandoned once they do uh, share and that sort of thing. Are there any tips, um, whether you are in uh, a partnership um, uh, of any kind, um, you know, uh, but, but just in interacting um, with men where we, we can help to create safe spaces and we can help to really nurture the concept of, of sharing so that you, it doesn't, you don't hold on to things. Yes. And, and I don't mean to um, say this irreverently because I know you have a mixed crowd, mm -hmm. um, but you know, the black culture um, has usually a lot of distrust in it. Mm -hmm. Like um, it's hard to trust people. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of that is just based on the culture and the experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, for that culture and just everyone that has had broken hearted um, experiences and, and things like that, it's, it's really hard to trust people. Yeah. And so you can't really share or, you know, tell somebody what you're going through if you know you can't trust them with that information. Right. And then we've always had those friends that we trusted and then they made the situation worse. Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as they left, they was like, girl, <laughs> this right, right. Is, you know, and, and so that makes it then worse for the next time you need to talk to somebody because you're like, last time I talked to somebody, they ran me down, they made it worse. Right. Um, and so actually one thing that you need to do is to be able to decide who is worthy of trust. And, and, mm -hmm. and so being able to say, okay, this person has proven him or herself trustworthy. And, and so it's not just so I'm going to try to my friend who I know runs their mouth or, you know, I know I'm going to, you know, I know one of my grandmas, God rest her soul, I knew if I called her, she was going to tell somebody as soon as I, <laughs> as soon as I got off the phone. Yeah, you know, I knew she was right. going to talk to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have to know the person and be able to trust um, that person mm -hmm. and then once you trust that person mm -hmm. then feel free to share you know and so uh, understanding what it takes to make somebody worthy of your trust mm -hmm. um, and then once you have evaluated that person um, and say okay they're worthy of the trust mm -hmm. then go ahead and give it a try mm -hmm. uh, if it if it doesn't work out try it again you right. know but because you need people yeah. you can't make yourself an island um, mm -hmm. people with uh you know people with high status or people that uh whose reputation matters mm -hmm. you know they're more guarded than most mm -hmm. because you know it there there's more consequences if there's more trust state. Is sure, sure. yeah and so but just being able to say okay this person is trustworthy mm -hmm. and and that will hopefully allow you to drop your guard and mm -hmm. share what you need to share mm -hmm. um men and women make the mistake of giving trust to somebody who has not proven worthy of it. Yeah. Um, and so um, it can go a long way to understanding who you can trust. Yeah. Um, and dealing with men, um, you know, for me, there, there are qualities of love that um, should be learned and taught. Mm -hmm. and, and some things you may not learn in childhood and things like that, but you have to learn those things um, as you grow and, yeah. and one thing is uh, being able to help somebody without expecting anything in return, in return. you know being able to help people without uh, expecting them to help you back and so that is a true uh, sign of true love and mm -hmm. how you can express that love you know sure, sure. I mean, as a mom of sons, you know, and, and as we are raising our, our two boys, it's, it's so important that, you know, some of the, um, again, the myths that, you know, men don't cry, that's, we, we don't teach that. We definitely teach being able to, and not only teach it, but, but definitely, again, cultivate it, um, being able to have conversations, checking in you know, well, where are you? You know, well, how are you? What's going on with you? And that sort of thing. And, and never judging. Um, mm -hmm. And again, creating that safe space as parents, guys, it isn't just about creating that safe space with your partner or your husband, um, your, your business partner, something like that, but also even with your children, 
so that they even feel safe to be able to share, um, to be able to, you know, stay connected, that sort of thing without you judging. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that that, you know, sometimes we miss that. And when you're talking about how we're raising Yes. Our, 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 our boys into to young men and that sort of thing. So um, this exactly. has been so, so incredible. Thank you uh, very, very much. Again, this is Tim Harris, uh, Harris Bible. Uh, I'm sure uh, it's available. Is the link in your, in your bio on your page? Yeah, sure. Uh, at Harris Bible, uh, Instagram or Facebook, and uh, also HarrisBible.com. I really awesome. appreciate you having me. It's uh, very nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate the work that you're doing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right. It. Thank All you. Bye-bye. Right. Oh, that was great. I'm so grateful for that time and that, um, you know, just that raw conversation. And a lot of times, guys, um, you know, a, a lot of us are, are in a generation of how we were brought up. You know, we were brought up, um, some of us either in the church or in... Um, synagogue and a temple whatever it may be and a lot of the um, things that were passed down to us concepts and things that were passed down to us from our families and our parents and our grandparents and those sorts of things where you know that's a part of the framework of who you are that's a part of the fabric of who you are um, but at the same time there may be instances as you have grown up in the culture that you're in in the world that we're in uh, affected by so many experiences that we have to look at new tools um, to add to our spiritual toolkit, that we've got to look at new conversations, that we have to look at new um, inspiration to be able to level up who we are and where we are, uh, spiritually speaking, mentally speaking, and certainly physically speaking. 